Hello, I'm Gordon Lane, editor of Cameralabs.com. I'd like to give you a brief video tour around the Canon PowerShot SX20IS. Here it is, the SX20. This is the successor to the PowerShot SX10IS, which was one of the best-selling super zoom cameras in the past year. Now, Canon's not messed too much with the winning formula here. This new model shares the same body, the same 20 times optical zoom range, and the same 2.5-inch flip-out screen around the back. But of course, Canon has made a number of enhancements to this camera, so without further ado, let's take a look at the highlights. The resolution of the SX20IS has been increased from 10 to 12.1 megapixels. And you'll also notice this little message here. That gives you some help. These are the new hints and tips on the SX20IS. You can turn them off if you prefer. If I press the display button, you can see the compression options. I can either shoot with fine compression or normal compression. Eagle-eyed Canon followers will notice that the super fine JPEG option of the earlier model is sadly no longer present, so the files are fairly compressed on the SX20IS. You'll also notice that there's no RAW files. This is a key difference between this model and the Panasonic, or indeed the higher-end Canon SX1IS. The headline feature remains the 20 times optical zoom range that's equivalent from 28 to 560mm. This takes you from wide angle all the way to really serious telephoto coverage. The SX20IS is equipped with the same 2.5 inch screen as its predecessor, and like that model, when you turn the camera on its side, the image flips to always remain upright. Much more importantly though, this is a fully articulated monitor, which means you can flip it out and twist it to almost any angle. This is very useful when you're composing high over the heads of crowds, or equally at very low angles. You could also point it at the subject for crafty self-portraits or twist it around and back on itself for protection. This articulation gives the SX20IS enormous flexibility and it's a key advantage it has over its arch rival, the Panasonic FZ35 or FZ38. One of the other advantages the Canon has over the Panasonic is a flash hot shoe on the top. This allows you to mount one of Canon's Speedlight flash guns, such as the top of the range 580EX2 model here. Now, arguably, a flash this big and expensive is overkill for the SX20IS, although it should be pointed out that it's still quite easy to hold thanks to the decent grip. But Canon offers a number of smaller and more affordable flash guns, and models like the entry-level 270EX are ideal for providing the SX20IS with greater flash capabilities. Externally, the SX20IS is virtually identical to its predecessor. You'll find these stereo microphones at the front of the camera. The little flash unit that lifts up. The hot shoe on the top for mounting an external speedlight flash gun. A variety of shooting modes including full manual. Around the back that 2.5 inch screen with a wheel alongside that allows you to quickly scroll through various menu options. So what is the difference exactly? If I turn the camera off I'll show you around the side. The SX20IS is now equipped with an HDMI port. If I flip this out, you can see that connected below the USB port. This allows you to make high definition slideshows on HDTVs. As before, the memory card slot is on the side. It takes SD memory cards. And by having this door on the side, it means you can access the cards while the camera is mounted on a tripod. And finally, looking underneath the camera, you can see the SX20IS is powered by four AA batteries. These may be larger and heavier than a typical lithium-ion rechargeable pack, but you can buy these almost anywhere in the world. Canon only supplies this camera with alkalines though, which are disposable, so you should really be replacing these with some rechargeable batteries as soon as possible. We're outside with the Canon SX20IS, and you've already seen how much this camera can zoom in, but I'm just going to show you once more. That is a massive optical zoom range at your disposal, but you'll notice, as always, I'm wobbling a bit here, but you can, of course, enable stabilisation. You have to go into the menu to do that. I'm going to put the IS mode to continuous. Now let's see if that's improved matters. As you can see, that's much better than before. I'll just show you how quickly this camera can autofocus. It's not too bad. Move it over here. That's okay there. I'm going to zoom back out again now and show you various graphics on the screen. Or in fact, to take this opportunity to just zoom in on this paraglider here. 
And that's the beauty of a super zoom camera, that you can suddenly go from a big wide landscape view here to zooming in on some action there. Now by pressing the display button here, I can overlay various graphics on the screen. I've got an alignment grid here, and also a live histogram, and you can choose to switch either of those off if you prefer. Then it switches back to the electronic viewfinder here and now back to the screen. Now in order to change some settings, we can press this funk set button here and you can adjust things like the white balance, colour effects, bracketing, flash options, metering, the shooting mode, the video quality and also the still quality. Now if I go back to the video quality here, you can see it's currently set to record in its VGA mode. If I set that to its new high definition 720p mode, notice what's happened here. You can see this very thin white border here. This is showing you the frame that you would shoot with if you were then going to start filming video. Remember with this camera you also have this big red record button here so you can start filming at any point. This framing guideline allows you to then see exactly what you're going to capture. The biggest upgrade on the SX20IS is its brand new HD movie mode and you're watching an example of it right now. I'm stood about one meter in front of the camera and the sound you hear is that recorded by its built-in stereo microphones. The SX20IS can record 720p video at 30 frames per second. Unlike other recent Canon cameras, this is encoded using the H.264 format and stored in a QuickTime movie wrapper. The maximum recording time is just under 30 minutes per clip, or when the file reaches 4GB, whichever happens first. If you're shooting HD, we found that you generally ran out or reached that 4GB limit after about 22 minutes of recording. But of course, you can then just start recording a new file if you like. Now let's see how you might use this movie mode in practice. This first sequence was filmed with the SX20IS mounted on a tripod and smoothly panning from left to right. And I should note that the audio you'll hear narrating all of these video clips is recorded with the SX20IS. It is possible to optically zoom the lens while you're filming, there from wide angle all the way to telephoto. And now I'm going to zoom all the way back out again. And as you can see, the camera manages to keep the image in focus without any obvious searching. This is a really good result. And it really encourages you to zoom during a clip, like I'm doing here again from the maximum telephoto, all the way out to wide angle to give a big establishing view. Here's another example. A nice tight view of the approaching steamship and then slowly zooming out to reveal the bigger picture. It really is quite addictive doing this with the SX20IS. Now you do have a massive telephoto range at your disposal which is really handy for grabbing pictures of wildlife. In the background there you can see how the out of focus effects look on the SX20. You also have a really great macro facility at your disposal. You can get really close to objects and of course film them while you're doing so. Under low light conditions, a camera with a sensor of this size is never going to produce really clean results, but to be fair, it's comparable to that of most HD camcorders. And finally though, I can't leave without showing you another zoom. Here we are fully zoomed in and getting ready to zoom all the way out for a big action finish. Grabbing shots like these really is a highlight of using the camera. The enhancements on the new SX20IS aren't exactly radical ones over its predecessor, but by improving a camera that was already one of the best-selling super zoom cameras of the past 12 months, well, the great cameras just got even better. Of the new improvements, the highlight is unsurprisingly the HD movie mode, and interestingly, coupled with the HDMI port on this camera, it comes that much closer to the higher-end SX1IS. And certainly, if your budget will stretch to that model, it's one you should also be considering. It shoots continuously four times faster than this model and offers full 1080p HD video recording along with raw files and a widescreen monitor and viewfinder. The closest rival for this model though is Panasonic's Lumix FZ35 or FZ38. They cost roughly the same and have very similar features. Drill down though and there are a number of differences between them that might make one model more appropriate than the other for your particular requirements. So, to make the choice easier, I've gone over all of those differences in detail in my full review at cameralabs.com. I've also compared the image quality when you zoomed out and also fully zoomed in. And there's video samples taken with both cameras that you can download and evaluate on your own computer. So if you're in the market for a super zoom camera, head on over to cameralabs.com. There you'll find my full reviews of the PowerShot SX20IS, 
along with reviews of Panasonic's FZ35 or FZ38 and Canon's SX1IS.